Hi, let's talk about some of the important things that you need to know for the ECCP assessment section. In this video, I'm going to focus on some tests that you mostly will never have heard of, but the ECCP thinks these are the most important tests that we need to know. First, we're going to talk about group intelligence tests, then we'll talk about individual measures for infants and for children and adults. So starting with our group tests, first we have the Wonderlick. The Wonderlick is a 12-minute test. It consists of 50 items, including verbal, numerical, and spatial items. It's used to aid hiring decisions. Fun fact that might help you remember this test. The WPT is used in the NFL, and you can also remember that the Wonderlick is used to assess wonderful NFL athletes. And you can also remember a little bit about what this test is about by thinking of that analogy. It makes sense that they would use this test because NFL players are busy playing football and they don't have all day to sit around taking tests, so they use this 12-minute measure. And you can think about how you would want football players in various positions to have each of the three skills it assesses. For example, the quarterback needs good verbal skills so he can communicate plays to the other players, good visual spatial skills or else he would never get the ball to his receivers, and good numerical skills so he can calculate how many yards he needs to throw the ball. Then there's the COG at 7, Cognitive Abilities Test, Form 7. It's used for students in grades K through 12, and it predicts academic performance, helps identify gifted and talented students and students who aren't so gifted or talented, and it consists of three domains, verbal, quantitative, and nonverbal. You can remember what the COG at 7 is by thinking about the name, which literally says that it's assessing cognitive abilities, and then number 7, which will remind you that this test is for assessing groups of students. So like if you had a group of seven students, or maybe 700 students, they could all take this test so you could see which ones are gifted and which ones are at risk. Moving on to individual tests, here are some that are used for infants and toddlers. First, the Fagan Test of Infant Intelligence, FTII. As the name suggests, it's used for infants ages 3 to 12 months. It assesses selective attention and recognition memory, by measuring how long the baby spends looking at novel stimuli. It turns out to be a good predictor of childhood IQ. On the ECCP, they're not going to spell out Fagan test of infant intelligence. They're just going to write FTII. But you can try to remember it with this mnemonic device. Think about ferberizing the infants instantly. If you can remember that the F stands for ferberizing, like you do when you ignore infants that are crying so that they can learn to soothe themselves, you can picture babies soothing themselves by looking at novel stimuli, like things around their rooms. And just think about how smart those babies are going to be later in childhood, because selective attention is a good predictor of childhood IQ. That's what this test is all about. Then there are the Bailey scales of infant and toddler development, the Bailey 3. This is used for babies and toddlers 12 months to 42 months. It has five subtests, cognitive, motor, language, social, emotional, and adaptive behavior. You can remember that the Bailey is used for infants and toddlers by thinking about how Bailey sounds like a little kid's name. Moving on to tests for older children and adults. The Cognitive Assessment System, CAS2, CAS2, is used for children ages 5 to 18. It's based on Laurier's PASS theory, which distinguishes between four cognitive processing abilities, planning, attention, simultaneous processing, and successive processing. That's what PASS stands for. And you can remember that PASS goes with CAS. The Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test, PPVT4, is used basically across the lifespan from ages two years and six months up through 90 plus years. It's a measure of receptive vocabulary. The patient has to point to the picture that corresponds with the vocabulary word. It can be used with patients with speech and motor impairments because all they have to do is point to the picture. You can remember this by thinking about the name of the test, P-body. All they have to do is point with their body. It doesn't matter if they have speech impairments or motor impairments, all they have to do is point. The Kaufman Assessment Battery for Children, K-A-B-C-2, is used for children ages 3 to 18. It's supposed to be culturally fair, and it consists of five scales, simultaneous, sequential, planning, learning, and knowledge. You can interpret it two ways using the cattell horn carroll CHC model of cognitive abilities, or if measures of crystallized intelligence like vocabulary would not be an appropriate way of measuring the subject's abilities for cultural reasons or other reasons, then you can use Luria's neuropsychological processing model. 
To remember that the Kaufman assessment is culturally fair, which is the main thing you want to know for the EPPP, just think of the last name Kaufman, which you may or may not have heard of. I've never heard of anyone with that last name, but there are a million different ways that you can spell it depending on what country you're from. Wow, that's so culturally fair. The Columbia Mental Maturity Scale, CMMS, is used for ages three and a half through nine. It consists of 92 cards, each with three to five drawings, and the child has to indicate which drawing doesn't belong. This is another measure that you can use with patients with speech or motor impairments. To remember this, which is something you'll want to know for the EPPP, you can just think about the name, Mental Maturity Scale. It's looking at mental maturity, not speech or motor maturity. It was originally designed to assess patients with cerebral palsy. Raven's Standard Progressive Matrices, which is abbreviated SPM, is a measure of nonverbal intelligence. It's designed for ages 6 and up. Kind of like matrix reasoning on the whisk or the waist, patients have to indicate which option completes the matrix. Instructions are very simple and can even be pantomimed, so you can progress through these matrices even if you have poor hearing, speech delay, physical disabilities, or limited English proficiency. That's what you want to know for the EPPP. The Later International Performance Scale, Later 3, is designed for ages 3 to 75 and up. It emphasizes nonverbal skills, so it's appropriate for patients with poor hearing, speech delay, cognitive delay, autism spectrum disorder, or limited English proficiency. Basically, the patient matches cards to illustrations, and it assesses fluid intelligence, including visualization, reasoning, memory, and attention. So as the name suggests, later international performance scale, it's good for international patients with limited English proficiency. However, on the EPPP, since they're probably just going to write later three, you can remember the strengths of the later three by thinking about all the different ways that you can say, see you later. You can wave your hand if you're nonverbal. You can say goodbye in sign language if you're hard of hearing. You can say goodbye in your native language if you're from another country. And on that note, I'll see you later. If you like the idea of having free study videos rather than shelling out money to all the testing companies out there, hit like and subscribe.